quickly tell me your name and a little bit about yourself. My name is Antonio Rockwell. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. I currently teach at Susquehanna University. Uh, my background is in molecular and classical genetics. Awesome. Sorry, just before we get started, you can do a little bit louder for both of y'all. Alright. Can you tell me a little bit about what your lab does? Yeah, so uh, we're a Drosophila lab. Uh, specifically, we're focused on development of sper and spermatogenesis. So we're interested in uh, enzyme METTL3, which is an RNA methyl transferase. Adds a methyl group to RNA. Uh, and depending on where that methyl group is added, it impacts different parts of RNA metabolism. Mm -hmm. So I actually originally started this work during my PhD program. I actually took it with me to my current position. So we've been working on it for five years at this point. That was actually a perfect segue into the next <laughs> question. Actually, tell me about your experience as an undergrad and graduate student, and in particular, especially as a person of color, but then also, how did you get into your system? Like, what? Maybe you want molecular bio and then yourself. <laughs> yeah, so I guess it's uh, really starting from all the way when I was six. So my dad passed away like, when I was six from a brain aneurysm. Okay. And I was uh, always at that age, like, what, what's going on? Like, what happened? But no one could actually explain it to me. Uh, so I think that's really where my interest in what's going on like, underneath, <laughs> like what I can't see started so fast forward to college i started biology originally i was thinking doctor which where i come from a lot of people think associate biology with being a medical doctor <laughs> but then as i was going throughout really my first year i got some hands-on lab experience i was like wow this is really cool <laughs> so then fast forward to senior year i just started talking to the current chair the former the chair at the time of the department who had a background in genetics and was a C. elegans uh, biologist. So I was talking to him about his work, and he was like, yeah, I'm actually taking a master's student for the first time in a few years because he could not take master's students as a, as a chair. So then I joined his lab as a master's student, and really with undergrad, focusing on molecular biology and transitioning over to C. elegans work as a master's student. It was really all positive. <laughs> uh, of course, you, a lot of things, well, he would always say 5% of your experiments are working, you're doing an excellent job. <laughs> which I felt like there, <laughs> yeah. felt like there were times in which uh, even less than that for my experiments are working. But overall, it was a good learning experience. And then from the C. elegans, I actually taught as a part-time lecture for a year at the university, at uh, Buffalo State. Okay. And then uh, I went over to my PhD program at Clarkson University which is also uh, a great experience where I spent three years and then ultimately transitioned over to where I'm currently at, Susquehanna University. Oh, you did a PhD in three years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of my credits for my master's transferred over. So then it was just like, pure research. That's incredible. Uh, so actually, one of the viewers just asked, what was your favorite experiment during your master's? Oh, my favorite experiment. <laughs> so <laughs> my favorite uh, one, also one that kind of gave me the most trouble. That was when I was first learning quantitative PCR. To be honest, it took about eight months to optimize it, but once I actually got it going, it was uh, it was pretty smooth. I think the why I really loved it, like doing it now with my students, is we have these nice kits, but back when I was learning it, we used trisol chloroform. It's uh, not the cleanest method to isolate the RNA and then actually do a quantitative PCR. But over time, when I finally got it, it was just so rewarding after eight months of uh, just, it seems like I was banging my head against the wall. Oh wow, that's actually a good question. Somebody asked, how do you pick the science? Oh. It's a long-term commitment. <laughs> oh, uh, for my current work? Uh, they didn't specify, but it, you mentioned you do Drosophila now, but you did see elegant, so how yeah. did you end up yeah. picking? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So, when I was uh, finishing up in my master's program, I applied to, a, I wanted something in genetics and development. So I applied to a few different labs. I actually got it down between two labs. And I, I, I love C. elegans, but you know, there are other things that also look really cool, other models. So I actually had to choose between turtles <laughs> and then Drosophila. And everything being even between those labs, the research was really cool. Uh, was I just didn't want to consistently have to break the necks with baby turtles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I the next question, what about the turtles? <laughs> yeah. 
So then I decided to go to, it was just the, the research that my foreign PI was doing, which was really interesting. Uh, and it was a novel field in what is epitranscriptomics of studying the uh, modification of RNA and how it impacts cellular function. It's like, you know what, that's something I, I really want to get into. I don't know. <laughs> the turtles, I'm sure, was an advantage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god. It was funny, somebody asked literally what I was gonna ask you. Why not? <laughs> um, let's see, as we're waiting on other questions. Did you have any notable role models? Like, did you have anybody that kind of guided you and really helped you mm -hmm. as a mentor? Yeah, so I would say both my master's and my PhD PI. So when I first, so was the start of my senior year, I started applying to PhD programs, even before I started applying to master's programs. And I didn't get into any PhD programs at the time, which I wasn't ready for. <laughs> I felt like I needed additional research. So then it was my master's PI, who I've taken a few of his classes, genetics. Uh, I kind of honestly say he came up to me and said, hey, Antonio, you know, you want to give some of my research a shot? And I'm taking a student. Hey. Uh, and he really believed in me, <laughs> which is nice. And same thing for my, um, my PhD PI. Who it, it was actually an ad she posted in the Journal of Genetics, which I eventually saw, wow. contacted her, and then I can honestly say she, the training in her lab was exceptional. So. Somebody asked, do you actually still use both organisms in your current lab, or do you want to keep at some point? I would love to like go back to some C. elegans work, to be honest. Uh, this is the interesting thing. So the gene that I'm studying it's evolutionarily conserved throughout eukaryotes, but it's not for some reason found in C. elegans. <laughs> uh, but the modifications found in C. elegans is an analogous gene that's found in C. elegans that I'm pretty sure that no one's actually looked at. So it'd be nice to go and look at that. So maybe a collaboration with a C. elegans lab at the very least would be really nice. Oh yeah, for sure. How many people are doing two model organisms <laughs> at the same time? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, nothing else so far, but we have some other questions. Um, oh, actually, how are you using your previous experiences to like build up your lab? Like, how, do you have like a certain kind of philosophy when you teach your grad or undergrads, or even just you mm -hmm. teach too? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I teach uh, advanced uh, some of them. So cell biology, genetics, which is the intro course, advanced genetics and biochemistry. Really, my overall philosophy with teaching in the classroom in the lab setting is patience. Because I felt like <laughs> for my master's and PhD PI, they were incredibly patient with me as well. Uh, you know, mistakes are just a part of the process. I mentioned 5% of experiments, if they're working, they're a good thing. <laughs> uh, you're doing well. So that's just the philosophy I try to incorporate into my classrooms and within the, the research lab as well. Somebody asked, what is the biggest challenge you found in science with both experiments, but also finding positions? Oh, okay. <laughs> so both ex experiments? It, they, yeah, it was a, I guess we could talk about them separately. So what was a big challenge with, you found in experiments, and then also with just finding your teaching position? I'm okay. assuming that's what I meant. <laughs> I think it was uh, learning just technical skills, which, you know, that takes yeah. time. I think. Uh, I gave a qPCR as an example, just how unstable RNA was, uh, or is. So just uh, figuring out how to manipulate RNA without completely degrading it. And then as far as finding positions was the... Yeah, they mentioned positions. I'm sure people are just curious how you even got into teaching. Oh yeah, uh, as far as teaching, so for my master's, just so it was fully paid for, uh, I TA, so that was complete. So that was completely paid for, and then I just love teaching. So I just, at that point, I was like, I know I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I wanna teach students, uh, hopefully help the, the next generation of scientists, and then I also love doing research. And as far as for Susquehanna, uh, long story short, I applied for a postdoc position. I teach a postdoc at Susquehanna, and I applied to a few other places. But really, I think the day after I left, I, the dean from Susquehanna contacted me, had an amazing conversation. I was like, yeah, I have to go to Susquehanna. It was pretty much love at first sight. Like, yeah. I really am happy. <laughs> Ooh, that's actually a good 
question. So I think you kind of touched on this. Maybe somebody missed it. They asked, what do you teach, but what do you do to excite students? Oh, okay. So cell biology and genetics, advanced genetics and biochemistry. Those are uh, the big three. So in advanced genetics, I have a semester-long Drosophila project, <laughs> which students absolutely love that. Uh, I tell my students that it's the journey is more important than the destination. So it's really not finding out the pattern of uh, inheritance for a trait I give them. It's just going through, coming in outside of class hours, the students really take to. Uh, also, in advanced genetics, biochemistry, I love playing games. So we play Jeopardy, uh, Taboo, there's something called Kahoot, which I think is pretty common now. I just yeah. heard about it for like the first time this semester, yeah. but it is fun. <laughs> yeah, the students love the game. So, no, I think uh, like active engagement, uh, the Drosophila project, even in advanced genetics, it's a three hour class. I lecture for about 45 minutes and the rest is just hands on. But there's Drosophila project or we do uh, yeast work, uh, bacteria genetics, so we have a wide range of things that we do uh, after the lecture portion of the, the class. Well, that's cool. I guess somebody asked, and it's kind of a good question, uh, they asked what's the difference in the classes, because they do sound like they all overlap, but I know you mentioned two of them are undergrad, they're like good core classes. Yeah, so cell biology and genetics is the intro class, okay. so everyone in the curriculum has to take it, just the fundamentals of molecular biology. Yeah. So even someone who wants to be an ecology major, for example, has to take it because those fundamentals are important. Uh, and for advanced genetics, it's a workshop-based class, which is it's three hours, 45 minutes of the lecture, and then about two hours of just wet lab. Biochemistry, it's about 50-minute class periods. Uh, typically, the first 15 minutes is some active activity, and then it's about 35 minutes of lecture. So they're actually pretty vastly different. Even for cell biology and genetics, there's a separate lab, which is three hours. But in that class, I also play games, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes of just a game. Like, Apparently, the viewers very much love the game part. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, so we do have to switch soon. But uh, it's going to kind of tie in two questions together. Yeah. What is the bi biggest challenges you face, and what piece of advice would you give students? I think the biggest challenge that I face is, so I started uh, 2019, so the following year of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, so really just <laughs> getting my lab up and running. Uh, but fortunately, my students were pretty exceptional. So even though they couldn't be in the lab, a lot of students in the lab at once, I think it was, we worked through it, and now it's uh, fully a go. I guess I can segue to that into advice. Uh, my colleagues are so supportive. <laughs> Uh, so my biggest piece of advice for someone who is looking for academia, make sure that you have colleagues who are supportive, who supportive who want you to, to succeed. I think that's like one of the things I love most about Susquehanna University. Uh -huh. uh, colleagues are amazing, and the students are also amazing. <laughs> well, it's been so great talking to you. Thank you. Like I, that was actually a really fun conversation. Yeah, it was nice to talk to you too, Alex. Thank you.